Now we'll take a look at configuring interfaces. On the, the machine that we're using in class, we have two virtual interfaces. Because what we're eventually going to do is create this whole network, which will include other Linux servers and Windows clients that we'll be servicing through our server. I type ifconfig here at the screen which is the command that you can see your IP information in Linux. You can see that I have actually two interfaces right now. I have ETH0 with the uh, 10.100.0.254 address and then ETH1. ETH1 actually points out to the internet, if you will. It is being natted out, which is what you'll typically see on your machine also. This one will be the one that will point in to our virtual network that we'll be using. Where are those files located and how do we administer those files? There is a utility called Network Manager, a GUI utility. I've disabled it. You know, be honest with you, sometimes it really becomes a bother when you're messing around with network configuration. Network Manager sometimes has certain issues. And so I've disabled it for the class and we're going to configure everything manually, which is good because you need to know what's going on behind the scenes anyway. In a Linux or our, I should say a Red Hat based system where you'll find your scripts and we'll CD into Etsy. Let me clear my screen here. Etsy sysconfig network dash scripts. And in here are the two scripts that we were just looking at. There is ETH0 and there is ETH1. If I VI 0 and bring it up, this is what a static IP address setup would look like. As you can see here, I've defined the device name. The boot protocol is going to be static. Other option is dynamic, or I should say DHCP. And because it is static, I've defined an IP address. And then the mask associated with that IP address, there's the actual hardware address of the interface. And then I've added a couple of optional things in here. I've allowed the users to control, so this user CTL equals yes means that users, normal users, can control this interface, bring it up, bring it down, so forth. And then I've disabled IP version 6 because we're not going to be using it in the class. And then I've said that when the system starts up, they should boot to this interface and this interface should be brought up also. Now these commands are all case sensitive. You notice there's no spaces in between the equals, but this really right here is enough to get the system up. As a matter of fact, honestly, you could eliminate all of this right here and you would still have a functioning interface coming up with a static IP address. All right, so that's, that's a static one. And then if we went and looked at ETH1, we can see this is the one that's facing out to the internet. Same thing, we've defined its name, given a device name. This one's going to be DHCP because it'll pick it up from any place you are. MAC address. We've turned off IP version 6 and we have on boot. Now on this one, later on, we'll be adding some parameters like, let me get down here. So peer DNS equals no. We won't do that right now because we don't want to shut that off. But later on when we become a, D a DNS server, we'll do that. So we're not getting DNS information from the DHCP server who's giving it to us. But we're not going to change that one right now, so we'll leave this alone. All right, so that's a little view of the network scripts and basic configuration of those network scripts. What we'll be looking at next is binding IP addresses, multiple IP addresses to a single interface. And we'll talk about why you would do that in a few minutes.